Hi, hello there. My name is Lang. With me is Get a Whale. On the camera is Young Truck Truck. And we are casting for Team Fortress TV. The event that we are here today for is the Team Fortress TV Twitch Invitational. We got two hot teams here coming from Open and IM. We have Goldman Sachs representing ESEA Open. We have the Ding Dong Daddies, second place team of this season's ESEA Intermediate Division. They're going to be facing off on CP Process for your entertainment. Get a whale. Tell me about this video game. Well, we have two hot teams. I've never heard that quite <laughs> described at the start of a cast. But, uh, you know, I haven't seen all of them, but I'm sure... Uh, they're at least warm. Uh, this is the first cast we're doing for this Twitch uh, TFTV Invitational, and we're very excited. And we're actually going to be covering two matches. This is the first of a double header. And, uh, I mean, to answer your question, you know, this is a video game where you, uh, you shoot things. It's a first-person shooter. How okay, much detail first, do we want to okay. give on the game, too? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm just going to pick it up as I go. I learn quick. Right. But yeah, no, this is uh, the first one we're doing. Uh, it's going to be Ding Dong Daddies and Goldman Sachs, two fa fantastic teams. Uh, they're certainly going to kill each other, and uh, they might be hot. Uh, what else do we know? They're they're playing in this tournament for a $2,500 prize pool, Lang. And that's uh, an amount of money. Uh, yes, so this prize pool uh, came from us from our good, good friend Twitch John, yep. an employee over there at Twitch.television. And he is the one who put this together. He's gotten Twitch to set aside a little chunk of sponsorship money for us. And yeah, this is our inaugural Twitch Invitational. And we're super, super excited about it. So huge thanks to Twitch John and the rest of Twitch TV for making this possible and uh, allowing this to happen. We're super, super grateful. And we always love working with Twitch John. He's a great guy and he's uh, made so many awesome things possible for us and our game. And of course, Twitch TV as a whole, always thankful for them. Uh, but yeah. We're loving these tournaments. So for those of you who don't know, the format of this tournament is it's a 16-team tournament. It starts out with four groups of four, and these are GSL-style groups. So that is to say, each group is essentially its own double elimination bracket from which only two teams will advance into the playoff stage. And the playoff stage, which will have eight teams, two from each group, is yet another double elimination bracket. So we have a ton of matches in this tournament, Get a Whale. So that many. Is Almost why. too many. Too many That matches. is why tonight... Yeah, we have too many matches. That's why tonight <laughs> we have two streams going. We right. have Team Fortress TV and X Television working together, cooperating, cats and dogs living together, uh, to bring you the best that the Twitch TV Invitational has to offer. So that's great. Love seeing this cooperation out of the Team Fortress 2 community. Uh, a lot of the casters, a lot of the cameramen will be working for both orgs throughout the duration of this. It's a truly, truly uh, cooperational effort, and we're super, super happy to be working together to bring you coverage of this awesome tournament. Yeah. Uh, It'll yeah. be all hands on deck, so to speak. And we're running this, it's running right up until the 25th, I believe, of this month of June. So probably more TF2 than anyone could ever handle. So you better just sort of... Prepare yourself, uh, prepare a first aid kit maybe if it becomes too much. This is true, yeah. This is running pretty much right up until ESCA land. In fact, we might have to play the grand finals on the 24th uh, in the event of anyone departing early to travel to ESCA land. Like, that's right. how far up to that deadline this is running. So immediately after this is over, you're going to have ESCA land, which of course is going to have the four best teams in North America duking it out down there in Dallas, Texas. So that's going to be great. Um, we do have all the players in the server now, and they are starting to ready up. Uh, Mike, do you feel like throwing a prediction out there? Throwing a prediction? Well, you know, some people would look at these teams and they would say they play in different divisions. Uh, you know, I am in the open division of ESEA. But I don't think there's that much separation between these two teams, because they've both had fantastic seasons, and they've both done it recently you know they're not going to be rusty or anything like that they've both just very recently been playing and you know if i had to say anyone i would say goldman sachs just because i know more players on that team uh lang what do you what are you thinking well i mean if you look at the numbers and you know like you said i mean ding dong daddies are the second place esca intermediate team and 
Goldman Sachs are a top two finisher of ESCA Open. Yep. So I guess the, the traditional <laughs> wisdom would be to go with the Ding Dong Daddies, but you know, you, you can't really you can't really just lay it out that simply. You know, these teams are in different divisions. They kind of exist in, you know, separate little bubbles. And, you know, it's always interesting to see how they're gonna, you know, face off. They haven't really played each other in a tournament competition setting before, so right. it's entirely possible that Goldman Sachs will have something off the wall that the Ding Dong Daddies just aren't ready for. And by the way, that's a really fun T name to say. Ding the Ding Dong, Dong Daddies. Daddies. Yeah. Triple yeah. D. Uh, triple D's. So, I mean, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these teams face up because they wouldn't traditionally face off against one another. We're playing on process or process, depending on what continent you're from. Depending on what province of Canada you're from. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but, uh, but no, I mean, this is sort of the quintessential sixes map, I think. It's an official map now, and I think it's a good... Uh, a good map for these teams to to face off on. Of course, we'll be seeing all sorts of maps between now and the 25th. Uh, I think we're, we're going to start it off with a banger here, and I'm excited to see how it starts out. Yeah, Process is a really great map. It did start out as a custom map that has been adopted uh, by Valve and is now an official map included in the game. Uh, and it saw uh, such a rapid level of success and adoption by the competitive Team Fortress 2 community that was kind of unprecedented mm -hmm. uh, for a custom map. A lot of the maps we see... a initial resistance from the competitive community. They're like, oh, it's it's not Badlands. I right. don't want to play or, this. Or it takes a long time for them to... A lot of changes have to be made to the maps. I'm thinking of Gully when it first came out, or Snakewater, or maps like that, that they had to go through so many iterations of the map. And there were some changes on process, granted, but uh, it's, it's very close to... Uh, they were very minor changes, and this is close to how it was when it came out first. Yeah, it's it's a really, really great map. Um, it almost always makes a good show for us, so I think it's a, it's a great opener to the uh, Team Fortress TV Invitational powered by Twitch here. So we're waiting on three players to ready up right now. Um, <laughs> the server's gone into sudden death right now in the pregame, but of course that's, that's nothing. That's fake. Right? <laughs> that's actually... That's pretty funny that it goes into the actual sudden death mode. That's... <laughs> That's interesting. I should maybe look at that. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I actually... Uh, the, the current match mod that is running on these servers was programmed by me. So if you see any problems with it, you know who to yell at. And it's I will try child. to fix them. Lang's yeah. young child. Happy Father's Day, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Thank father you. Oh, I need to go see my MGE mod, kid. <laughs> I heard he's getting kind of unruly. Yet. Not at least a phone call? You didn't hear anything from him at all? He, like, texted me. It was spelled wrong. You could tell he was drunk. Text. Yeah. You need to sit down and have a talk with your, uh... with your config, Lang. It's starting <laughs> to become a problem. Speaking of texting fathers on Father's Day, that's actually what I did today. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. I, You're that I, kid. Well, like, I could've called him. Like, I don't know. I was just, I was like, oh, I'm busy. I'll just fucking text him. Whatever. <laughs> so, I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe that wasn't optimal. You so do anything? Was, he was probably you busy for casting the... uh, TF2, probably. Your My father? dad? Yeah, was he doing Yeah, the... he no, he cast a ton of TF2. You got it. That's that's where I got it from. Handed down. Your father and his father before him, yeah. they've all been two, TF2 casters. Wow. Uh -huh. That's pretty astounding, yeah. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird being born after TF2 came out. I'm young, you know? So right, of weird. course, I and we, as voice. we discussed in the pregame, you know, I was born after MGE mod came Yes, <laughs> this is true. We're very young casters, but you know, we... <laughs> so we're all on the same page now. Everyone knows mm -hmm. uh, our history. Not sure so what we're, we're just... waiting on, Lang. Do we know what's, uh, what's going on here? No, I mean, I've informed the teams that we are ready to cast this. We're ready to go live. Uh, and it looks like it's just Showstopper waiting on to ready up. Alec of the Ding Dong Daddies has readied up. Showstopper just... probably just finishing the text to his dad. Maybe he heard us on the cast, and he remembered, oh my god, it's almost, Father's Day's almost over, and it's time to... Looks like we're going any moment, though, now. That's what we're all about here at the Team Fortress TV Twitch Invitational, is bringing families together. And that's why we are casting here. Who are you watching, today. Lang, on this first middle? On this first middle, I'm going to be looking at Unf, who in-game shows as underscore forever I am, which is real great. 
Unf hitting the fast, fast rollout into mid here, getting that early sticky off onto the choke, sticking off his own health, get to start of protecting himself here. We have Zigster bombing high, high into the air, getting taken down quickly by that coordinated spam, but his bomb has given room to Goldman Sachs, giving them some breathing space to work with. You must Mike getting launched into the air. Bank able to take him down numbers right now in favor of the Ding Dong Daddies and Goldman Sachs being forced to back out of this choke here. Their medic still living, being forced to back out with nothing but Huli at his side. They need to be careful that they don't get flanked here at last for some aggression. Uh, but yeah, in, in the chaos there, the Ding Dong Daddies built up a bit of an uber advantage. A little bit. They're uh, about to get at any second here now. It was an unfortunate mid for Goldman Sachs. Huli nailed his rollout, but sort of got there and had no support and nothing doing. And so here we are suddenly on last. We have no off-classers at last, so it's just going to be a good old-fashioned DM fight. And uh, neither team wanting to act first, but I don't think they're going to wait too long here, Lang. So I, I see apparently what happened is the teams were not aware that this match mod is currently live on one instead of live on three. So maybe not all the players were quite ready to roll out to mid. Uh, I have good mm. news though. I am working on live on three. It's not quite as simple to implement as it sounds, but I'm, I'm aware that nobody likes live on one. So I'm going to change that. In any case, we do have Goldman Sachs uh, staging a bit of a push out back here onto point two. Try to recap that. Uh, minor fragging happening in favor of each team. We have big, big bombs coming out from these soldiers on Goldman Sachs, actually forcing out the pop from the Ding Dong Daddies, but Goldman Sachs uh, popping their own Uber, but there's still three players down, whereas there's only one player down on Ding Dong Daddies. Another player going down, that's Mr. Slynn, so there's no heals up for Goldman Sachs. Ding Dong Daddies bringing the push in last right now, hoping that point with his medic, and Easy. Goldman Sachs not going to be able to defend. 1-0 in favor of Ding Dong Daddies as we go into our second mid, Mike. Yeah, one thing that I'd like to see from this Goldman Sachs team is a bit better protection and, and better support all around. Um, I don't think they've been protect protecting their medic Slynn as well as we've seen with the other side, but watching the Goldman Sachs team, I've got Huli, uh, who again hits the rollout great, and on last rollout, some of his sticks sort of hit the pipeline, and they don't do a lot of damage there. So we'll see. Uh, he's taken lots of damage and goes down right away, so that's Huli down. Let's see if the soldiers can maybe uh, compensate for that. D-Flame is going in hot. He picks out... Thor. We're looking at 4v3 right now, uh, but a lot of damage done on the Goldman Sachs team. Who's going to stick this out and bully it? Looks like it's going to be Goldman Sachs. Yeah, Ding Dong Daddy's being uh, one player down there, decide to back off, given that they had no clear line of sight onto the positioning of the players of Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs leaving one scout to Cat Med and getting pretty aggressive here at this choke. They don't want to let Ding Dong Daddy's get too comfortable. Devin and You Must Mike opening up the aggression here, getting good damage on Bank, but Bank does barely survive. The cap now just going in favor on mid for Goldman Sachs. Both Ubers popped almost at the exact same moment. Mr. Slynn being separated from You Must Mike. They're getting launched way up into the air. That's not great for him. He's kind of caught off on into this corner, but he does Scout manage to jump out of there. The Scout came in and just tried to make a play that time for Slynn. Somehow gets away, but finally does go down, so that's Slynn down, and a really great aggression. It certainly seems like the first round was a bit of a false start, maybe for both teams, because we've seen them really turn it on now. There's only two players up, though, for Goldman, and including Huli, who's up high. He's going to get taken out, though, by Alec. And the Scouts have been playing great on Ding Dong as well, I've noticed. Yeah, so good flank pressure there. We saw the flank of Ding Dong Daddy's pushing in through that computer room, uh, really pincering Goldman Sachs and able to take out, I think that actually might have been the entire team. That might have been a full wipe. You must, Mike, uh, yeah. respawned halfway through that fight as it, as it was uh, so long there. They're coming but, right yeah. in. They're not waiting. Here we go. Now we early pop. Advantage. Real early pop, and Showstopper goes up wants to clean up the one soldier. Now, there is still no off classes. We have no shenanigans, no heavies, no nothing. It's just a DM fight here on last. Zigster gets looked like a double or possibly. Well, regardless of what happened, there's only D Flame up. He goes down and suddenly Ding Dong Daddy's looking at a 2 0 or 2 nil, depending on what continent you live in, right? Again, on what province of Canada <laughs> you're from. They got that, you know, we say Zed here, okay? Well, <laughs> we definitely do, yeah. Yeah, uh, Onf Canadian. once again, on. hitting a pretty, pretty fast, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, <laughs> uh, hitting a pretty fast rollout, uh, but we have Zigster right now hiding here on the corner mid, doing the big bomb, it's all the eyes of Ding Dong Daddy's looking at Zigster, so Zigster wasn't able to do a ton of damage, but his distraction there was really, really crucial, all of Ding Dong Daddy's are kind of standing in one area there, they just sort of all took the same rocket, but ultimately this scout pressure from the Ding Dong Daddy's is going to push Goldman Sachs out, Mr. Slynn actually running for his life here, he's, he's pretty low, and uh, yeah, Ding Dong Daddy's gonna take this mid quite comfortably. 
Yeah, you must Mike just ended up standing in the middle of about three or four players there with his shoddy out. For a long time, Uber saws were out, it was uh, interesting. But Ding Dong, uh, third time in a row, here they are taking last, and uh, we have Goldman Sachs, they are about to get their Uber. But we've seen this play out already twice, Lang, and I'm wondering what is going to happen differently here from Goldman Sachs. Can they pull off a pick or something to, to make this fight go differently? We do have D Flame on Sniper, and D Flame okay, is a pretty sure. strong sniper. I, I'd, I'd be comfortable saying he's one of the better snipers than up. Uh, neither Uber Pop for either team right now. They're just holding, sort of trying to see what spam they can make happen. Lots of aggression from Ding Dong Daddy's out in this lobby. That scout almost dying. That's Alec. They might have to pop here. You must mic it and push back in that rollout area. Um, but yeah, both teams sort of backing off and buffing up again. I'm on the D Flame cam, I feel like there's a pro headshot about to get busted out. And it, this this last point of process, it can be good for snipers, but depending where the push comes from, and if the push should have comes around alongside of where you're not watching, it's not uh, you're not going to do much as sniper. Teams just sort of jockeying for position right now and uh, looking for picks. Thor comes right in and goes down right away. Alec is in on the scout though as well on the left. Alec uh, making a push for last himself, but he was real low and goes down. And so suddenly we've got two players down for Ding Dong and one down for Gold, and Ding Dong kind of backing out now. Smart. So this might end up being a bit of a reverse pick though, because pushing out here is pretty hard, and Ding Dong Daddy's played this right, they can force the pop out from Goldman Sachs and then push back in with their own Uber, win the fight out here, and then push into last when Goldman Sachs are players down. But we have this fight engaging right pop. now, both Ubers popped almost at the same time. Once more, the Ubers just sort of staring at each other. Uh, we see the flanks not really doing a whole lot right now. The flank of Goldman Sachs doing a good job making sure that the scouts and a roamer of Ding Dong Daddies can't sneak in and make a back app happen during the chaos here. Uh, looks like that engagement was pretty non-lethal. Goldman Sachs sort of backed out, and Ding Dong Daddy is now uh, tightening up their position on this ch on these chokes. Yeah, so we'll see if Ding Dong Daddy can pull it off here again on their last. And uh, what I saw last time is Thor went in immediately, their soldier, and got killed. And Alec went in as well, and, you know, suddenly they were two down, and they sort of aborted the push. But uh, if they can maybe play it a little better here this time, they can probably... I don't know if we're going to wait for Ubers, though, here. Suddenly we've got 80% for Goldman. They will get theirs first, but I don't feel like they're going to be pushing out first, Lang. Yeah, I mean, it's not, not a big enough move. advantage to push out on, I, I don't think, and Ding Dong Daddies have no reason to really try to force this here because they're so close to their Uber as well. I wonder if they're going to try another two-player suicide. I mean, they safely recovered from their previous failed two-player suicide, and that can certainly be a strong play. Or yeah. I wonder if they'll try to... I don't, I don't know if the Ding Dong Daddies have a strong sniper on their team or not, or, or who would be their sniper. Well, oh, Deep Flame is down, speaking of snipers, he, he was right up on a pipe and got taken out. Traded a soldier for a sniper. Uh, yeah, I mean, Nobody that's sort of act, a... Though. Nothing. Yeah, not sure if there's really much of a gain there. Those are both sort of the ancillary factors when it comes to the actual push itself. They matter a lot before and after the push, but in the actual push, it, it's, it's hard to say. I think that comes out as a zero-sum game that particular trade on, on this particular last point. Yeah, you must uh, Mike is uh, getting ready to do something, but again, we know that Goldman is not going to act first. They want to hold on to their Uber to defend, but you must Mike is uh, sort of up in that rollout area. Yeah, Pick Alec on, on that sniper out. now. I'm trying to see where Alec has his angle. The flame was pushing way up there as well, and I'm watching Alec as well because it said, well, no, I'm not because down goes Alec, but again, uh, for a sniper, I don't think that's the pick you're looking for. The Uber got forced to win rollout area. Down goes Thor and uh, <laughs> forever I am. And so now this might be the chance. Goldman Sachs, they suddenly have three Ding Dong players down and they're going to move out of here. But Huli goes down. A nice pick by Showstopper. And that's also Maui going down. Showstopper just running in here with his shotgun. Can he get <laughs> Mr. Slynn? Oh my god, Mr. Slynn survives with just Magical. barely any health. Uh, it looks like the respawns of Goldman Sachs are going to be able to do it. And now... Uh, Maui Wowie and Showstopper, that is the combo for Ding Dong Daddies, are down, whereas all six players of Goldman Sachs are up. So, and they have the second point cap. The flank must have done that while all that hot action was happening there at last. Uh, I wonder if they're going to try to buff up and push through Choke here. It looks like, uh, and Showstopper was dropping an LMAO there. I guess he enjoyed the process of trying to chase Slynn into his own spawn. But uh, it is good to get out of this last. Uh, not an easy spot to get out of. And uh, jump in on the Medic. You must Mike cleans up Thor, though. Slynn now dominating Thor, if you're a fan of Slynn's. Uh, you must Mike taking uh, up height advantage here, and Goldman Sachs going to take this mid back. 
So they're certainly kind of on a roll, and that can happen. Once you push out of the last on process, it's easy to sort of get rolling and uh, take uh, one or two points in a row. Uh, so Mr. Slen has a pretty significant uber advantage here, a little bit less than 50%, and they know that. They're being really aggressive. They're trying to push the young days out here. Bank coming in on the flank, trying to force something to happen. Not able to make that uber pop, though. Uh, Ding Dong Daddy is really want to try to find a force here, though at this point it might be in the best interest to back up and just build, 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 and hope they get that last 20 or so percent uh, before Mr. Slynn and Goldman Sachs can attempt a last push here. Yeah, so this is the first time that we've gotten to see a, you know, a last uh, offense from this Goldman Sachs team, and so let's see how they approach it. Uh, you know, I've, if you're familiar with Slynn, uh, he's a smart player and he, he knows what to wait for, but... I'm just curious because we have D Flame though on Goldman Sachs on offensive sniper, and so I'm wondering is he going to be aggressive? Is he going to sit back? He whiffs on the demo, so he didn't get that headshot. Yeah, on for actually getting that pick onto Devin. Uh, so Goldman Sachs, one player down. I don't think he's going to come back as Jump another in. off classer. Soldier, Thor went straight for D Flame, which was interesting, but Slyn went down to pick. Thor got Slyn! It was actually I mean, a you're drop, watching D Flame, yeah. yeah, my goodness. Well, uh, Thor is your star of the round there, picking up the med drop, the uber drop, in fact. So he wasn't going for D-Flame after all, he was obviously <laughs> no. going for Mr. Slynn, who was, I don't know, pocketing uh, D-Flame or something, who knows. So, suddenly the, the tone of this has turned around a little bit, but we are still here at this last point. Yeah, Goldman Sachs are trying to hide in creative spots and force the pop out from Ding Dong Daddies as they maybe try to mount a push here, but Ding Dong Daddies playing this really, really safe. They're really trying to clear their spots, check the sticks. We got forced. Uh, Ziggs are forced it successfully, and they're taking it... Right now, they're just sort of standing in IT. Time has been added. I don't know. They're, they're coming out of IT now. They've got Goldman Sachs certainly on their heels. They're backing up. Hide advantage here, but... I don't know, I think Goldman, Goldman Sachs want to fight this. They've got everyone up except Zigster. They have a big uber advantage. They're not c quite going to get it in this fight. They lose D Flame and US Mike, though, and as well as Huli. But it's 3v3 now, and they still have their heals, and they're at 95. This isn't the ideal situation, though, to use an uber lane. Yeah, I mean, I think they can safely keep taking this fight, though, because their spawns are closer, as they do still control this middle point. So, as their spawns are just about to come up, we see Zigster and Devin trying to take some of this high ground, as now the remaining three players that they're waiting to spawn are up, and they should be here in just a few moments. Uh, Devin, with the pistol spam, pushing the rest of the Ding Dong Daddies out of the choke. Mr. Slynn currently has his Uber. 30% advantage, although that is rapidly disappearing. I'm not sure if they're going to get in position in time to push before Ding Dong Daddies get their Uber. It looks like they're not going to, but they might just try to go anyway, Will. I just called you Whale instead of Mike. Whale, whale. yeah, Mike. Well, you know what? We have lost the names. It's the internet. It's <laughs> totally fair. Um, I've been watching the Bank and Alec, these scouts on Ding Dong Daddies, who've been doing a fantastic job of cleanup and are playing very smart and very safe. Bank, uh, I don't know, maybe trying to force something out through the choke area, but all, all four scouts, in fact, in this match have done a great job of cleanup so far. They're uh, top ranking. We have Ubers pop, though, in choke, finally. Now we uh, didn't, get, didn't get kicked up there, but... Finally popping his Slyn. Did you see how long he waited? Can we get the Slyn delay timer going? <laughs> Quite a long time. Uh, so you must Mike hit a bunch of air shots on an Ubered thing there, doing a fantastic job of just juggling and stalling out the aggression from Showstopper. Showstopper spent most of his Uber in the air, unable to control his own movement. Uh, but unfortunately, Goldman Sachs looked like they maybe overextended into the meat grinder that Ding Dong Daddies had prepared for them. The trap was sprung. Goldman Sachs being forced to back out here, not having a favorable engagement. Although, that said, Mr. Slynn has survived, and his Uber isn't too far behind. They still control this midpoint, and their spawns are coming up, but all six players of Ding Dong Daddies are on mid. Goldman Sachs are going to give that up, and prepare to defend their second point. Both teams are doing a great job of protecting their medic. I watched Zigster just a minute ago come in and try to take down Maui Wowie, but it didn't work, and... You know, sort of uh, all the classes swarmed in on them, so I've seen both teams sort of protecting their meds. Uh, neither med has gotten caught out too many times. We did have that one drop, of course, by Slynn, but uh, overall they're, they're sticking together. And again, that, that first round is but a memory now, a practice round, if you will, but we are still looking at 2 nothing. It counted. It wasn't a true practice round. It is still 2 nothing. Ding dong. Yes, this is, this is not a practice clan war. This is, a, this is an official clan PC war we have going not, on uh, here. Yes. No, we've got two players down. Uh, I didn't see the picks and lots of damage on the Goldman Sachs team who finally popped. They popped first. And they're going to be backing out here now. Uh, one of the... Uh, a rare, you know, imperfect pop by 
the almighty uh, Mr. Slim. Zixter's calling out, what the F was that? What the F was that? Yeah. Yes. Was that? Right. I'm, I'm, I'm unsure. I don't turn the chat off either. I keep the game chat too, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Ding Dong Daddy's currently owning four points. We see a lot of aggression from Goldman Sachs here. They're trying to maybe come out. Uh, you must mic the pocket for Goldman Sachs getting picked off there. Uh, but Unf also going down in the process. We actually have a... Yeah, Mr. Slynn getting there really aggressive. Alec just took out, out Mr. Slynn. Did you see that? It was a body shot, but still it was a pick by the sniper on uh, Mr. Slynn. And so suddenly we had Ubers even, but now we got Blue Uber, Ding Dong Daddy feeling fantastic. They're going to slick their hair back and come on in with uh, <laughs> Scout D Flame tries to come in and ruin it. But I don't know. Are Ding Dong going to uh, pull this off? They come in with their Uber. They've got two players up. Looks real good. Yeah, all eyes on Huli here, but no, the cap is gonna go. So that's 3-0 in favor of Ding Dong Daddies. That's gonna end our first half here as we uh, wait for all the teams to ready up. Pretty convincing line. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say so. Um, you know, Goldman Sachs were able to make it closer after the, the first round or so. Um, definitely doing a better job of playing their mids and leapfrogging their ubers. But uh, the flank play of uh, Ding Dong Daddies just seems really, really strong. Uh, they're not letting Goldman Sachs uh, get away with just looking forward. If every member of Goldman Sachs is looking in one direction, uh, Ding Dong Daddies are realizing that and really capitalizing on that. And they're able to apply a lot of pressure uh, specifically to the flank of Mr. Slen and, and forcing him to sort of be, be paranoid and split his heels maybe more than uh, Goldman Sachs wants to. Yeah, I'm wondering if these teams, maybe they know each other a little better than uh, than we realize they're... Uh, taking jabs at each other in game chat right now. One one person said, "Open must be hard this season." Um, you know, we are seeing a little bit of a separation uh, in in skill level and in, in DM. I mean, what do you think is the big difference, Lang? Because certainly, it's you know, we talked about it before that Ding Dong they're an IM team and Goldman are an open team. I, I'm not seeing any huge crazy thing that's jumping out to me though. I mean, what are you seeing? I mean, I really do think a lot of it uh, is that flank play, but also, you know, you can't discount the fact that uh, Ding Dong Daddies being an IM team are, you know, playing against other IM teams more often. Right. Maybe they're, you know, or the, the weight IM. training that they do is with a little bit heavier weights, you could, you could say. Hmm. Uh, I mean, that's Figure not to say it. that, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not to say that, you know, a team like Goldman Sachs is never playing IM teams. I mean, there's nothing stopping Goldman Sachs from scrimming against IM teams or even invite teams. You know, it's not like... We, we don't talk to each other across divisions or anything. Um, but definitely, you know, in their matches, uh, Goldman Sachs are, you know, playing against other open teams. And while there's certainly plenty of competition there, especially from a team like Arizona Iced Out Boys, uh, against which Goldman Sachs is a fantastic game on CP Gullywash a week or so back, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, they're not facing up against Meat Market. They're not facing up against Ding Dong Gaddies. They're not facing up against all these other really, really great IM teams. Yeah, that's a good point. That's uh, something to to keep in mind. I'm I'm sort of looking at looking at all the players. I mean, when you when you look at their histories, other than you know Slynn having that one season of invite, um, you know these are all uh, players in in basically the same skill level, and they've played in that same skill level. But you know, uh, a lot of these players uh, they they play in in Pugna and they play mixes and those kinds of things a lot too. They're they're no slouches, is what I'm getting at. But uh, we're starting the second half here, sir. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these guys certainly know each other, and as you can tell from some of the, the jabs going back and forth in the game chat, they certainly have history, but enough blabbering. We are live with our second half here. Huli and Onf hitting pretty similar rollouts in terms of speed. Very, very fast aggression from Thor here, getting up onto that high ground, but choosing to back up a little bit, playing it a little bit safer here. We have Goldman Sachs being very aggressive now with their scouts taking up with the high ground. Thor with the big bomb, actually Goomba jumping off of that soldier, show-stopping, following up his aggression, but also getting taken down. The timing from Ding Dong Daddies was great, the coordinated spam from Goldman Sachs was just too strong. I don't really think Ding Dong Days did anything wrong there. Goldman Sachs just played that really, really well and hit all their shots. So good job to them. Very decisive mid-fight, but Maui Wowie has survived, so the Ubers are even for both teams here as Goldman Sachs are capping up this fourth point. Yeah, big difference there. I think it comes down to the soldiers, as a matter of fact. Uh, looking at Zigster and You Must Mike, although Zigster just going down there and on last. 
Uh, and now actually three players down in Goldman. But uh, on that initial mid, I think the big difference was uh, soldiers, because I think that the demos were pretty evenly matched. They were doing what they had to do in the first three rounds, but soldiers getting it together and coordinating a little bit better there and doing what they do so well, which is shoot things and cause immense splash damage. Little so engagement here now at uh, Choke. Uh, the Uber got forced on red. We had Showstopper go down, and both Ubers now in the middle here in Choke. Yeah, so I like what Goldman Sachs are doing here. They, they played their Uber really, really close. They didn't back up at all because they knew their spawns were coming and their spawns were going to be there pretty quickly. And that's exactly what has happened. So now we have three players down. Make that two players as Showstopper has respawned. Um, sorry, my steam is blowing up right now. Uh, get away. You take it's this. Hot. I can use some support. Yeah, taking this. Uh, we've got Goldman Sachs who are looking now and they've basically committed to this last now. Huli is in and hasn't faced any kind of resistance. We have a heavy on last. It's bank for Ding Dong. But there are three players down already, and now it's just it's just Thor left, and it's going to be an easy cap for Goldman. So they take their first point, and we're looking at 3-1, still for Ding Dong Daddies. A fairly quick round. And Goldman Sachs, uh, it wasn't a very long halftime, but it looks like whatever they had to do to adjust, they've done it. And so I'm going to be looking at their soldiers again on this middle. I'm looking at Zigster. Let's see what Zigster's doing on this mid. Because it certainly seems like the coordination is there for this Goldman Sachs team. Whatever they talked about, it worked. It worked. Whatever secrets they busted out, it worked great. Six is going to try to wrap around a little bit, but he's there met on the flank by a scout and goes down. Evan P trying to do his own flank thing, but he's going to drop down onto the point. He grabs the pack. Still, uh, we have both medics up, though. And we have... Three players for Ding Dong. We've got four still up for Goldman. Goldman's going to take this mid. Dixer gets back up. I believe he was the first one to go down in the mid, so he gets a real early respawn. But this middle point is going to get capped by Goldman Sachs. And that's all you missed, Lang. Okay, so yeah, I'm back. I put out the, the fires that sprung up there briefly. Uh, doing support while casting is, is difficult. I don't recommend it. Phew. Thor, well, being very nope. aggressive here, trying to open things up uh, for the Ding Dong Daddies. Maybe force uh, an Uber Pop there or just try to delay things. So that, uh, yeah, they could set up a bit of a better defense here. Goldman Sachs trying to take advantage of this one-man uh, numbers advantage that they have here. The Uber is being popped right now. Huli getting very aggressive, but not able to force the Uber out from Maui Waui. Maui Waui doing a great job of dancing around there, and now he's a full Uber advantage yep. for the Ding Dong Daddies, and they're getting ready to push out here, Mike. Looks great for them. Very lucky the way that that turned there because they were sort of on their heels, but now they're able to sort of use this aggressiveness and come out and bully it until they need to use Uber, and they just used. Uh, they've got Zigster, Slin, You Must Mike are all down for Goldman, but look at this cap on last. We've got the back cap. It was D-Flame being a sneaky snake, but uh, doesn't quite get it. If you were to uh, drop an eyelash on the point right now, it would be capped, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. That's a much better saying than nipple hairs away. We should start using that one instead. <laughs> right. Me, I agree. <laughs> Me too. Uh, That's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. We can thank Tyrone paint quite for that the saying. same image, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not quite as visceral of language. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, we have a little engagement here happening on this choke. Onf doing a great job of really coordinating his spam there. Oh, wow. Bank coming in with the big cleanup. Three players going after Goldman Sachs. Zigster with the response onto Thor, but Bank and Onf once again just doing so much damage there. Great push out of Bank and Onf from the Ding Dong Daddies. <laughs> Maui Waui is going to have 100% Uber and get a whale. I have to do more support. Please, More please support. Here. Huli is left. He was the only one standing. He's boarding up the house. He just got Showstopper with his little sneaky trap that he set up, so... He got one pick out of any way. He goes down, though, now. And uh, you can see it for yourself. Maui Waui has a full Uber, and I don't think they want to wait at all. They're just going to walk right in, waltz, if you will, into the last point. Early pop, uh, we're going to get this. Maybe get the pick on the soldier. Or maybe not. Ding Dong Daddies. They're staying alive here. Maui Waui's got his demo. This point's still not capped. I'm trying to chip away at it right now. It was Ding Thor who was trying to make, take some ground, but we're still fighting it out here at this last. Maybe not decisive as we've got Showstopper now, uh, three players backing out because they're the only ones left. Yeah, a lot of, you know, like multi-spawn wave aggression there from Ding Dong Daddies, and I certainly like the, the idea, but it ended up not really panning out as we do have Goldman Sachs now pushing out from there last. Huli's got a really, really good spam angle, but his uh, pipes 
unfortunately not able to connect right there. Uh, he is going to back up as his health was quite low. Ding Dong Daddy is posturing aggressively up here close to the Chokes Bank. Once again, being a great initiator for his team. He has yep. that pick on to Zigster as Mami Wowie does get his Uber, and they are in deep on this right side, Mike. You must Mike trying to defend. He's got some pesky scouts on him. Both of the scouts seem like they were going for him. The blue Uber uh, was popped first. You must Mike does get the pick on one soldier. What's going on here? D Flame wants a medic, but he's Uber. He can't shoot that. Uh, this last cap, we've got a scout on it, but D-Flame jumps in to defend it at the last second there. D-Flame's still up, and with Maui Wowie left, that's a second in a row successful defense of this last point by Goldman Sachs, who have turned it on, Lang. Uh, yeah, Maui Wowie spamming arrows as he backs out through the choke, does meet up with the spawning members of his team. All six players of Ding Dong Daddy's are going to get forward spawn here, so they should have no problem holding mid and forcing the uber of Goldman Sachs. They do try to push in on their advantage, which they have about 30%, and that's certainly enough uh, to try to force a, a, an advantage push here if they want to do so. Uh, yeah, both teams are sort of playing back, building up their ubers, and I imagine... We'll see some aggression from Goldman Sachs here in a moment. Uh, judging from the positioning of you must Mike, looks like they want to take this through IT. Yeah, and uh, Huli on the other side, ready to sort of uh, maybe converge and come in. We'll see how they play it here as it's popped. Only 85% for Maui Wowie, who's going to get the F out of there, so to speak. Uh, just kind of chilling right now in his own... Uh it's just way, way back as we see this midpoint getting capped by Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs really turning it on. Uh, such a dominant first half for Ding Dong, who popped their Uber. And they need to pick, uh, get some picks out of here because they've already lost their demo. They've lost Thor, their soldier. It's not looking good right now for Ding Dong. Uh, yeah, that was a really, really good Uber from Goldman Sachs. They, they did a great job of closing the distance. As Actually, wow, Showstopper getting two kills, Slim. I think, with the same rocket there. Yep. Slynn and Uli going down at once. That'll help. But, uh, I mean, still, we've got the second point. Oh, Devin P comes in behind and picked out Maui Wowie! And picked out uh, the demo as well, so my lord. <laughs> Quite a nice wraparound play there by Devin P, who is going to go down, but I think he'll take it. My goodness. Um, yeah, so... But we're just going to kind of reset here, it looks like. Thor comes in with a jump, but I think, well, we're going to have the second reset, actually. Yeah, sorry. More and more support I'm having to do while casting. I should maybe <laughs> look into a better way of doing this. In any if case, you're messaging Lang, don't message him. He's busy. Uh, uh, shout out yeah, there it's to stuff anyone. they got to message me about, so that's the okay. crisis of both running this tournament and casting it. Yeah, I'm making the best of what we got. It's also 90 degrees in my room, so I'm sweating it out over here once again. Hot Lang, we can call it. Shout <laughs> the, out. These hot Langs. hot Lang, yeah. But uh, yeah. Hot Langs, uh, we've got 95 for the blue guys. The blue guys are going to come into this final area here. Uh, there's a sniper up, so that's... Obviously, we're looking at uh, somebody trying to get a headshot. That's Alec. But uh, Goldman Sachs are coming in, and they've got, two, they've got half of this point capped already. They can't cap it while Ubered, obviously. Uh, but they, they, they un Uber. And they get it. And we're looking at 3-2, and this open team... Who says they're an open team, Lang? Or they've certainly... I don't know, they've hit the turbo button. Remember back in yeah, the day, you could hit the turbo? I think they say they're an open team. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. that's what I got from the site. Could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, 3-2 to two this match, certainly uh, the gap narrowing uh, round by round here as Goldman Sachs take their second consecutive round in a row. You've got to think uh, that they are feeling momentum right now. Uh, they're feeling good about themselves, having taken these past two in a row. And again, they're looking to dominate this mid if they can. D Flame is coming in, tries to get the demo, gets him. He did get the demo. The medic took only a little bit of damage, but that's Maui Wowie just still staying alive. Looking at the numbers, though, this is going to be a point for Ding Dong Daddies. Who, uh, yeah, very, maybe... very decisive mid there from Ding yeah. Dong Daddies. They're going to have a near the, actually, yeah, a full uber advantage pretty much. Mr. Slim is just not spawning. Wow, 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 he's at 90% on his uber. Capping up their fourth point here, and I have to imagine they're going to push in right away. It'll be interesting to see what off classes we have from Goldman Sachs. We have, we have a construction worker. Devin P is building a sentry gun for Goldman Sachs. D-Flame opting to go with the pyro instead of the sniper. Maybe he hasn't been hitting his shots as first person cam, so it's, uh, it's hard well, to tell from third person. a lot easier to hit your shots as pyro, I find, you know? This is true. You miss a lot less of them. Uh, so in they come, the Uber gets popped, and right off the bat, uh, Mr. Pyro gets popped up in the air. D-Flame staying alive, though. Can he make a difference at this last? We'll see. You must Mike, trying to get a pick here on the soldier. He does, well, he get the assist anyway. Uh, sentry gun did a little uh, thing there, and uh, that's going to shut down this last push. Maybe that's all they needed, you know, was a, an engineer and a, a pyro. 
partridge in a pear tree. Exactly. Can't believe I just said that. <laughs> that's terrible. It worked. I, I enjoyed it. it yeah. Might. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, it's uh, his yeah, Successful yeah. defense, though. Oh uh, yeah, very successful defense coming from Goldman Sachs. Uh, Mr. Slynn now having a 60% Uber advantage. It looks like once again, you must Mike wants to take this through IT. His last Uber through here was so successful. I have full faith in him pulling out another gun. And Devin. And his other scout, D-Flame, opening this up, creating that space. Oh, yep. Mike going for the Miracle Air Shot, not able to make it happen, but his spam uh, finds a home at the feet of the Ding Dong Daddies, pushes them out of choke with that damage. And it looks like they might want to try to roll this through, but Maui Waui is so close to his Uber, Mike. Gonna get it, yeah. About to get the Uber, and I think it was a fantastic job for Slynn, who only just now po uh, popped. And uh, getting bullied now, it looks like. Here's Goldman Sachs. They're, uh, they lost Slynn, and now they're backing up out through Choke. And good time here for Ding Dong Daddies to really just sort of bring it. But uh, uh, waiting, waiting a moment. They're, they're waiting. They're going to take it through Sewer. Why not? Yeah, I think they knew that Yuma Mike was in there, and they wanted to, uh, to clean him up. I think they had uh, Alec in mid who sort of scouted him out and was containing him in there. So good clean up. Uh, from Ding Dong Daddies, ensuring that they have that pick that they can try to work off of if they do decide to carry this momentum into a choke push. Uh, but, you know, Unf is pretty hurt. Uh, and wow, actually, D-Flame coming from behind. He managed to hide over in the IT room. Golly. Comes up from behind, takes out Unf. And right now, the immediate follow-up aggression from Goldman Sachs with that demo being down. Mr. Slen getting bombed by both soldiers. He does get Goes taken down. down. Really tight aggression from both the soldiers of Ding Dong Daddies. Well, but, of course... Down. Well, Golden Sacks are yeah, down now. We got 3v3, and what a great job. How about these scout slang? They've been doing so great in sort of every every piece of the scout job. They've been creating space, like you said, on Ubers. I've seen it happen. They've been wrapping around and getting little surprise plays. We had a one back cap attempt. Uh, the scouts, both of these rounds, both of these halves, they've been uh, tops on their scoreboard. So whether it be cleanup or capping or, or whatever, they're, they're doing it, sir. They most certainly are doing it. As I said, these hot teams, Mike. They're so coming, hot. <laughs> coming from it. all these divisions. Uh, action ha happening over in the IT room. Frags going the way of both teams, but Ding Dong Daddy's ultimately able to get into the position that they want. They do have Bank up there capping that point, and he's certainly going to play a little bit of Spire King if any bombs come his way. But Ding Dong Daddy's Maui Waui and Ump being super aggressive here down on that bottom left side, looking from the perspective of the attackers. Showstopper needs one of those fancy finagling uh, kill streak kits, you know, because he, he picked out an awful lot of players on that life. We've got most of last capped here. Sling getting his heels out, though, and it looks like they're going to defend this last. We get the repush though, Uber comes in, Slim goes down, forget what I said, it looks real good for Dingo. Uh, you must Mike actually has full health here, and he's got the shoddy out. Mike with the shoddy is super dangerous, can he do it? Oh wow, between him and Huli, they dished out all the damage that they needed and did uh, have another successful defense. Uh, Goldman this? Sachs' last defenses have been really, really good. You must wow, Mike. with a huge air shot. Jeez, Mike, calm down. Golly, not, not you, well, Mike. You know, I mean, you must, Mike. You're fine. You must, Mike. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I'm sweating still, but uh, you must. We'll sweat like, it up. Big sweaty cast. Big sweaty air shots from you, must, Mike, <laughs> defending his last. And, you know, here we go. Uh, these hot, sweaty air shots. It is so sweaty. It's disgusting. But it's here we go. Adult. Second gets recapped. Yeah, 18 plus. But, uh, <laughs> you know, parents, uh, kids, make sure you ask your parents for permission before you watch this cast this evening. Uh, we've got a bloodbath going out here at second, and I think both of these teams are feeling it right now that they want to. They, they, they want to take a round, and it was tantalizingly close for the Ding Dong Daddies there. I really thought that was the round, and, and here we are at mid. It's very hot, very tantalizing. Ding Dong Daddies backing up through this choke right now. Uh, the aggression, once again, from this flank of Goldman Sachs. They're being super forward on that IT room, but the spam of Unf was there waiting for them, so they are forced to back up, and now they're just going to get their buffs, rally through this choke area. Mr. Slim does have his Uber. Maui Waui has his now. Uh, let's see what happens here. So we got the Uber popped here from Blue. Uh, Huli just sort of standing back and doing sort of that classic passive, more passive demo robot. He runs right into Alec who takes him out. Uh, there's now three players down for this Goldman Sachs team and four down now. Mr. Slim with 32 health. It's, uh, it's hard to put out heals when you're running for your life. 
Mr. Slim does get taken down by the bomb from Thor. Thor with the overpowered stick out, trying to kill D-Flame. Unf now trying to follow up on that damage, but he does get taken down by Devin. Devin being really aggressive here, just giving no respect. D-Flame coming in, thinking about maybe continuing that aggression. And yes, here are the reinforcements from Goldman Sachs. That mid-cap is going to go in favor of Ding Dong Days, but Goldman Sachs trying to push out the daddies right now. Uh, even though I don't think their medic is here yet, so they're playing really aggressive and it's kind of working. Ding Dong Daddies are scared. They're playing back like they don't want to engage. Finally, now we have the aggression coming out from Showstopper and Thor, claiming that high ground that is rightfully theirs. And uh, Goldman Sachs on the back foot now. They maybe have overextended a bit too much. The health now is not great for them. They are backing out. Ding Dong Daddy is carrying the strike. But Hooli gets the frag onto Bank. And Bank really has been the initiator. He's the show starter. And then Showstopper comes in with the Uber. And there's a joke in there somewhere, but it's not good. So I'm not going to finish it. You said the joke. It's not in there somewhere. You got it. Uh, <laughs> you know? What more can be said? No respect. I liked your no respect comment. I'm just thinking of Rodney Dangerfield now. Um, I think these scouts are getting plenty of respect, though, because they're killing it in this match. Right now, we're waiting for Maui Waui to come in. Uh, might get forced. A lot of rocket spam, but managed to hold on. 90 health finally does now pop and is going to bully this team out of here. Goldman Sachs is going to back up to their last. Maui Waui just going to just kind of team up and just play it safe. We're going to get this second capped eventually, I'm sure. We'll get on it. There we go. Here comes the Uber in retaliation, though. It's you must Mike, and uh, if you've been watching this match with your eyes open, you know that he's been dangerous, and so they're going to give him his room. Wow, what Thor just did there was awesome. It looked he like Golden Sacks were going to be able to catch up to Ding Dong Daddies as they were retreating and maybe uh, kill Maui Waui, but then Thor jumped in and every single member of Golden Sacks turned around and stopped pushing forward, and Thor also got the frag onto Huli, so that Hooli, was a yeah. really awesome Roma play there. I caught the tail end of that. That was uh, very impressive. Uh, a lot of back and forth, and certainly these teams seem to have sort of figured out how to how to play and how to counter the other. No more quick rounds. We've been back and forth for, for a little bit. It is 3-2, uh, I believe, still right now for Ding Dong Daddies, who look like they're going to just try to strong arm this point right now. Here we go. The Uber was popped. But uh, again, we're going to probably see the same situation. And here it is. It's You Must Mike taking his Uber right back into the pile of human beings. Chasing down a scout, though. And now pressured Dick by the other scout, Bank. Ding Dong Daddies took that Uber in really deep, hunting for frags and trying to get the pop out of Mr. Slim. Mr. Slim was so far back, his positioning was good, they weren't able to make it happen. Unf, though, actually does get the frag on of Mr. Slim. Uh, but every single player on Ding Dong Daddies is down. That is a full wipe. Uh, whereas Goldman Sachs have enough players up to start this mid-cap, so overall they do come out of that engagement on top, but Ding Dong Daddies have the closer spawns, they have the closer heals, and Alec is leading this potential repush for his team here. Yeah, I mean, Ding Dong Daddies are kind of in this strange uber cycle where they're always the first ones having to act, and Goldman Sachs are able to just come back in and blast on them in retaliation, but they do have a slight advantage right now again, so it'll be important for them to use this uber smartly and use it in such a way so that once it runs out, they don't have blue guys coming in on their heads. But we'll see how it plays out. We're still at this second point because that mid cap didn't go down. Do we Ding have Dong a backcapper Daddy? behind? Do we have someone um, on mid? No, no, no. Yeah, I think that was just a residual from the from the previous fight. Maui Waui at a not insignificant uber advantage here, about 25% by the time they push in, well, probably 15, so it's actually a pretty narrow margin. They really have to close this distance to Mr. Slynn if they want to make this count. Mr. Slynn currently at 85% uber, he's nope. not Show healing Showstopper, going at stopping Booyah. that show. I'm going to stop making that joke. It's not good. Uh, Start <laughs> the show for it, <laughs> even, you know? Takes out Mr. Slynn. That's a full wipe, though, for Ding Dong Daddy, so even though Mr. Slynn did go down, it seems that all the uber and aggression of the... Uh, Ding Dong Daddies was focused on only taking out Mr. Slen, the Goldman Sachs having once again yet another successful defense. And uh, yeah, they might even try to make something happen on mid here, I don't know. They might, they weren't able to move right away, they couldn't be maybe as aggressive as they wanted to, they had no heals, and they knew that the meds would be coming up at a, uh, about the same time, but they're certainly going to come right out to mid, I mean Slin's not far behind, there he is, he's got 25 already. And the Ubers are going to be equal again, and so... You know, we may not be sitting at second, hopefully, for, you know, 20 minutes again, but um, a good job, certainly, by Goldman Sachs for pushing out there and good play all around by uh, by that team. Huli trying to, you know, cause a, cause a disturbance here at the second point. And without Ubers now, I mean, it all comes down to DM, and this is where we've sort of seen Ding Dong Daddies kind of come out on top a few times before without Ubers. Yeah, Devin doing a good job there of taking out Showstopper, but Bank just... Um, Bank's really been, I think... 
the star of Ding Dong Daddy's in this game so far. He's just so aggressive. He doesn't care. He'll buff or no buff. He'll just run in. And as I say that, he goes in and forces the Uber out of Golden Sacks. Uh, I'm backing out there. Of course, Mami Wowie does have his own Uber. So Goldman Sachs uh, are going to decide not to push their luck, not to push in there into the awaiting Uber of Ding Dong Daddies. And uh, I think they might try to wait for Bank here because I think they know how much work Bank is doing. But uh, now that Bank is up, they're starting to move forward and they're going to push into mid. It used to be that he got no respect and now he is getting his respect. Um, we have just under nine minutes to go in this second half, Lang, and so time is starting to tick down, but this one is within reach. There's only one point separating them. And big pick there! It was You Must Mike was coming in, and suddenly there are two players down on Goldman Sachs. Uh, Slynn is still there giving out the heals, but they're going to have to reset. You're not going to rock a four-player push. And Ding Dong Thor comes! Thor! Thor! Thor, Thor. came in. He killed, yeah, he killed the medic. He did the thing you're supposed to do. He did that great roamer thing. There's a couple of those. I, yeah. I like the roamer things. They're great. Right, you, do know, you would know about those, yeah. I would, I, I yeah. played me some Roamer in my day, get a whale. Of course, um, well uh, this gentleman Thor, he's certainly doing it here, and Ding Dong Daddies with almost 80% Uber now are in a fantastic position. We have the Heavy and the Pyro defense, but this time I think they switched it up. I thought I think it was D-Flame on Pyro last time. I don't know, I mean it worked. Say what you want. It's actually it the last Heavy time. Pyro NG, so they have the Highlander defense going on. Ah, right they yes. have no duplicates of any of the classes. I think that this is going to be pretty strong. The Ding Dong Daddies are coming in, though the Uber popped quite early. That sentry going down to the pill spam from Umf. They actually have a ton of cap time on this point. That's going to force Goldman Sachs to all stand on this, and Umf is still alive, so you can dish out all the damage. Umf now has his stickies on the point. Bank going in for the cap. On solving his stickies. Oh. Wow, Coleman Sachs looks like they might have this. Might be able to defend this. On does go down. <laughs> what? I can't believe these last defenses coming what out of Goldman this? Sachs. They're just, they're impenetrable. Devin finds Mami Wowie, who's trying to fight things out with his crossbow. Maybe going for the medic back this kid. Bank trying to make the cap happen. Even <laughs> still, they're just unrelenting. But Goldman Sachs, finally, now that they know all the enemy players are in front of them, finally feel comfortable moving forward. Alec actually has a sniper angle here. He's taking shots as quickly as he can scope in, but he's not able to make it happen. Goldman Sachs want to give Ding Dong. Oh! Alec oh. with the mid or headshot onto Devin. That's a great shot. Uh, Frag's happening all over the place on this map right now, but ultimately at Goldman Sachs, starting to take position on this mid, starting to cap it up. Yeehaw! Can we call a yes. yeehaw on that? We, uh, <laughs> I mean, yes. how about Bank trying to run on the last three players at last, including a pyro, and he just, he just doesn't care. He's just gonna, he's just gonna run right through. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump over these guys and just see if giving I can them, finish off this last. Give them the Canadian yeehaw. Give them the Canadian yeehaw. Yeah. Shoutouts to Calgary, uh, Alberta, which is a city in the world. But uh, well known for its cowboys. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, look, look at how fast uh, this can change, and suddenly Goldman Sachs back on the offensive, and that can happen so much on this process map lane. So then we've got five players on this second, uh, you know, being friends. Friends forever. Forever I am. Forever I am, yeah. Yes. And here they come, an early pop. They aren't able to pick out the med. That's a real good job by Maui staying alive here. No crazy off-classing here, and so again, it's going to be DM as U.S. Mike goes down, and that's a lot of the firepower of the Goldman Sachs team. And that looks like that was the... He, he might have been the whole push. I don't know. Are we going to have a secondary push here? Uh, Showstopper actually peeking out through that rollout area, but they got the call that D-Flame was flanking in through that bottom, right? D-Flame doing a good job of forcing Ding Dong Days to back up. He actually forced, I think, three or four of them to back up. So D-Flame's aggressive poking there, while he didn't really expose himself to much damage, actually contributed a whole lot. It stalled that push out entirely. Uh, Devon actually finding a frag onto Unf. So while wow, that's the demo down, no sticky trap. We're gonna see Goldman Sachs push in here. They don't want to let Maui Wabi get the super. Another frag. That's Thor down. Two players down. No stickies. Goldman Sachs is gonna take this in right away. Come on, Maui has oh, his super. He's so close. Here they. I mean, a real easy decision here to come in, and the Uber finally popped for red, but way too late. And guess what we have? It's three three. And suddenly we've got a ball game, sir. We got five minutes to go. Uh, yeah, this could easily be one round, or it could be like three rounds, depending on how these mid fights go. So let's see what these demo men do. They're actually very, very quick here in the mid. Unf getting that spam across the point, the delicate dance of the demo men here. But now we have the rest of the teams arriving in the mid. Goldman Sachs maybe a little bit faster, getting in Ding Dong Daddy's face. The fight currently happening on Ding Dong Daddy's side of the map, but Alec getting the first frag and the second frag. Now it looks like it's definitely going the way 
of Ding Dong Daddies, that initial aggression from their scouts is just so strong. And wow, that's a really decisive mid win. Very wipe. decisive. I'm wondering, the Ding Dong Daddies, you know, whenever they win a mid, it would be cool if they had like a team bell that they could ring, like a ding, or like a doorbell or something like that. You think there's something like a gong they can smash when they dominate a mid like that? Or if not, I want to start one. We should maybe get a that's gong. That's where the CFTV name needs comes to invest from, in a gong. Yeah. We've got, uh, maybe some shenanigans going on at last. I already see a pyro at the last point. Devon on Engineer again. How do you crack these shenanigans Highlander strats? Uh, I mean, do I don't know. know. It's really hard. It, it, it almost feels like you might need to, you know, have some picks going in beforehand. But uh, wow, Ding Dong Daddy is being really aggressive here, getting a, a ton of picks in that lobby area. Mr. Slynn's not going to have his Uber anywhere near in time. The aggression from Ding Dong Daddy is coming in right now. But once again, Goldman having a pretty good defense here, and their spawns are slowly starting to come Oof! up. That point is Scout really close to being capped. That point is so close to being capped. The soldiers trying Devil's to come in, in. Thor. Thor does get the pick, and Thor's going for the bomb, Mr. Slim with the air arrow, Thor getting the frags on the way down, but actually cratering before he can cap, on now coming in, fighting against Zigster. Oh, Zigster backing up, going for the bomb, oh, oh boy, the point, but does get taken out by Zigster, and Devin, this point is so <gasps> close to being capped, it's just, just inches, just eyelashes, not nipple hairs, away from disaster here. I'm in shock. All I'm seeing are things blowing up. P are people hitting their kill binds on the last? Because all I'm seeing are body parts everywhere. It's disgusting. I'm in shock that Ding Dong have not sealed this. I I, I think... I mean, are they going to come right back in again, or are they going to wait, or what? They're at 90% now. I'm in shock at that defense by Goldman. And it wasn't it wasn't the off-classers. That was just a good old-fashioned defense, Lang. Yeah, that, that, yeah, their positioning was really good. They kited the aggression out, and... Uh, you know, made made the better of their positioning. But we do have Maui Wowie with his Uber advantage here. Uh, about 30% left. The Uber is popped now. They're focusing that sentry, immediately taking it down, but a lot of their Uber was used on that sentry. But they're all over uh. the cap. Uh, and yeah, they forced Goldman Sachs back into that spawn. Goldman Sachs thought they could maybe get their Uber in time, but no, Ding Dong guys just ran out of the point and capped it. Textbook mild advantage push. I just made that term up. Mild advantage. Uh <laughs> So you wrote the textbook, maybe? Is, it a, uh, is this maybe. a new textbook? Um, <laughs> but in any case, that was a really good, clean push coming from Ding Dong Daddy's uh, well-deserved round win there. I'm looking at you, Mus Mike, because he's been a difference maker uh, certainly all night long, and I'm wondering if he wants to make something happen on this mid. He is sort of trying to wrap around a little bit. He's jumping in on the medic right away. He wants that mid and the, the demo, but he's not going to get it because he's got a scout in his face. Suddenly, there are three players left up for Ding Dong Daddy's, and so Goldman Sachs, they have a minute and 35 seconds. Uh, I'm sure we've seen the timer already. I'm not watching the cast, obviously, but um, Crit's got our back. It's going to be a close finish here. Um, yeah, so as uh, the Uber's even for both teams right now. Uh, both teams also going to have six players up here as the last few players are spawning. Uh, Goldman having control of this fourth point here. Getting ready to push in the last. We have a little bit of a off-class defense coming out of the Ding Dong Daddies. Yeah, bank, bank up on the NG. Alec on the sniper. One minute left in this half. Get away all this push. Needs to count here. The Uber is popped. Mr. Slender they're going right for the point. Huli leading the Uber. Not sure how I feel about those demo Ubers. Maybe they had a soldier bomb in first. Uh, but the Uber not feeling good from uh, Goldman Sachs. They're kind of backing out here. Um... Ding Dong Daddies, it looks like they've had a good defense. Uh, they feel comfortable about that. Both teams kind of backing off. Although Goldman actually poking in here on the uh, left side. Yeah, kind of a mi almost a misfire on the Uber here, but they're thinking better of it. They're coming back in. The soldier jumps to last, and it looks like they're maybe going to try to stack on. I think the medic, medic and Huli, uh, I don't know. They're not getting on it yet. There's just a big DM fight, and we've got explosions wow. everywhere. Slim goes down. Devin is still up. We've got both scouts up. It's Devin and D Flame, and they're trying to make it. Oh, he picks out Thor there. Devin, Devin picks out the demo too. Well, we've been talking about the scouts all night, and my goodness, Lang, with 10 seconds left, what have we got? What's going on? So, I have a few things to say here. The first is that that was an awesome play, and in clutch, these these teams are going to be going into overtime. Second, this is the first time we've ever seen an overtime on this mod, and I really hope it works. <laughs> we literally uh, it, don't know what's going to happen. It, it appears that overtime might not work. Match so over, it says. I guess I, I, guess I need to fix that. <laughs> Whoops. Um, hold on, let me message these teams. Lang is going to text his son real quick, uh, as we talked about earlier. Happy Father's Day to any dads out there. It's going to go to overtime. Uh, it's just that the... <laughs> 
uh, the config and, and and things things aren't ready for that. But uh, we are going to see an overtime here. An unbelievable finish. It taking it down to the wire. We couldn't have scripted it any better than that. And when the pressure's on, both of these teams, Goldman Sachs and Ding Dong Daddy, certainly know how to turn it on and make things happen. Make magic happen. So I keep talking. Uh, I'm going to figure out how to get overtime working on this server, so uh, <laughs> bear with me one moment. Alrighty, we're going to get overtime working. See, I mean, we're learning all the time. Uh, we want to thank you for tuning in. If you are just joining us here at this Twitch Invitational, Twitch TFTV, uh, thanks for joining us here tonight. We've just witnessed an unbelievable match between Ding Dong Daddies and Goldman Sachs. Uh, we finished off 4-4. It is going to be going to an overtime period. And uh, certainly, I mean, there were off-classers on that last encounter at last point, but I think that when it comes down to it, the scouts have been the stars all night long. Certainly we've seen fantastic things out of the soldiers. You must Mike has had some great air shots and so on. Thor and Showstopper have been playing very strong too. But uh, in the end, these scouts are coming in for cleanup at the perfect times. Uh, if anything, I've been seeing uh, not a whole lot out of the off-classing. The snipers have been up. There have been one or two headshots here and there. Uh, you know, a sentry gun is a, an annoying thing, but I think the scouts have been very powerful. And so in just a moment here, we are going to have an overtime period, as they call it in hockey. I don't like to call it a half, because that's not math. Three halves is more than a whole. Uh, so yeah, thanks for joining us. We are just uh, sort of getting these config things figured out. Uh, this is kind of a growing pains thing, but this is a first thing, uh, first time for us. First time running these kinds of tournaments uh, on this particular config. And uh, so certainly while these teams get ready and wait, uh, and we're communicating to them on how this uh, overtime is going to work, it's, uh, it's sort of advantageous for them because they've had these two full halves now to sort of play against one another, and they'll have all of this time now, these five or ten minutes, to sort of talk about any different kind of strategies or any kind of uh, you know theory crafting they might want to do. Okay, so they can plan in it out. attempting to circumvent my own plugin, I crashed the server. So Yay! what we're gonna do? Crashed it. <laughs> good to know that my plugin Yeehaw. is the boss, but yep. that's that's frustrating. Uh, so I crashed the server. So what we're going to do is Goldman Sachs are gonna go to their own server, their own private server. We're gonna play out this last round here. Uh, they're getting me the Source TV as quickly as they can. Uh, I apologize, folks, for these technical difficulties. They are 100% my fault. This is my code. Yay! I take responsibility for it. Let's hear it uh, for lying, everyone. <laughs> if you want to yell at somebody, yell at this hot, sweaty hashtag, dude in Wisconsin. Yeah, hashtag hot lang, guys. Uh, and he's sitting there in the dark, so the dark, the darkness <laughs> hot lang. consumed me. Get away, <laughs> Lang, we, we all love you. You know, we all love you, but, um, you know, you need to get some more fans in your room, I feel like. I, I just... To sort of help the temperature issue. Well, I have a fan, but I have to turn it off for this cast, because, here, right. let me turn this on, and you'll, you'll see. See how bad it is. Like, hold on. We've got some subs. I feel like you can hear that. Subscribing. Is that... Oh, is that fan? yeah. Yeah, so let me turn that off. So that's an airplane. Sounds like when you get in an airplane, you know? You can hear uh, sort of the air. In the well, plane, yeah. Yeah, in the plane, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Hot Lang, you know we all love you, but we're we're gonna have to take a restart here. Yeah. So we'll we'll uh, we'll get the overtime going. Uh, what are your thoughts, Lang? How are you doing? You're not getting heat stroke, I hope. Uh, I drink some I'm water. Sw I'm sweating profusely. I have no water with me at the moment. Um, oh, Lang. We're gonna please. we're gonna figure it out though. I'm sweating out here. Also, every person playing in this tournament is yelling at me for various technical <laughs> problems, so I'm having a great night, Mike. So you're wrecking um, yourself for rock and roll, it sounds like to me. Yeah. Don't uh, care about I'm, water or anything. I'm very hardcore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Mr. Slim is going to be getting me that source TV info soon, and we are going to see this last overtime round played, I promise. We will not rest. I will not drink water until we have this last until overtime over. round played. That Famous is the promise. last words. That is the contract I, I will <laughs> write to the Team Fortress 2 community that has placed their trust in me. So Mr. Stone so, uh, getting his server set up right now, Mike. Perfect. Uh, you know, Lang, uh, I want to remind everyone that's out there watching in uh, TV or slash internet land that this is not the only night we're going to be doing this. You will have many, many nights of TF2 from now until June 25th or possibly 24th 
But uh, certainly for at least another week as we play through this Twitch TV uh, Invitational. This is just the first night. If, we, if this is what we have on the first night, imagine when it's the finals. Imagine when we get really into it. Imagine when then my code works. Imagine, imagine when your code works. That'll be great. I can't wait for that. So hashtag Hotlang is uh, trending <laughs> I think, right now on Twitter. Actually, I'm going to get water, otherwise I'm going to pass out. I will be right back. Okay, Lang is going to get water so that he doesn't die, which I think is a bright idea. Um, so to, to sort of follow up on that thought, uh, talking about all the coverage, I want to tell you guys that X Television right now is uh, overdoing their thing, and they're covering another match from this Twitch Invitational right now on X Television. So, you know, if you have your fancy multi-monitor setup or something like that, you can maybe set that up and watch that while uh, you get ready for this to get going. But we are going to be doing an overtime period between the these ding dong daddies and these uh goldman saxes saxophones so uh stick with us but yeah check out xtv as well uh there will be vods for all of these but uh they're doing it live right now if you don't have a second monitor you know get a get a tv or something like that or get, a, get the uh, laptop get the smartphone get, a, yeah. get the tablet out we grab got these your great iPad. mobile twitch apps go get your ipad watch Speaking it on the ipad of- Speaking of great things made by Twitch, get away. This tournament Segway. is also, th- this wonderful tournament is also sponsored by Twitch. Huh. Please don't take this tournament as a sign of the quality of Twitch's service. How about that? The that was two a good are not segue. necessarily related. Speaking of things about Twitch, it was kind of perfect. <laughs> I'm, that's why they pay me the big bucks, right? You know? It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, still waiting on this hot first TV from <laughs> Hot Slin. Gonna be doing some hot yoga after this match. As soon as we can. Everyone's getting their iPads ready. I've unintentionally intersected with ready. another uh, with another catchphrase. Certainly not what I intended, but uh, yeah, get your iPads ready. I don't know what you're getting ready. them ready for. There's one. Take photos of this cast. There's two. Get them yeah. ready. Get them ready. So somebody has been so kind in the Twitch chat to give a multi-Twitch thing, so you can watch these both at once without a second monitor, without an iPad. Without an iPod. You know, I always thought, Lang, it would be difficult to buy, uh, go to the Apple store in the Boston area because you wouldn't be able to understand if they were saying iPad or iPad. I, okay, I, I'm with you. I, yes. Yes. Yeah, give me, uh, I want one of those iPads. Show starter. Show starter, right. Yes. What are some other bad jokes we can do? Let's just flesh this <laughs> out a little bit. This is perfect. I, I got nothing. Oh, boy. <laughs> We are uh, waiting. So apologies, guys, for uh, this delay, but thanks for sticking with us here on uh, TeamFortress.tv. Mr. What Slim do you has expect? hopped in the, uh, the third server now. He's trying a third yeah. server, so at least not yeah. the only one having technical difficulties tonight. Maybe he Team hopped. Fortress 2. Maybe TF2 is just being temperamental for everyone. Maybe it's Maybe, not personal I mean, against What me. I think, Lang, here's my... I've been theory crafting on this for the past um, 10 seconds. My theory that I have, and this might go in the next textbook when they write it, but um, maybe this tournament uh, is bringing so much attention and so much hype that the game just literally couldn't handle it. And in fact, the game that's, wasn't that's designed... You know, it's just blowing up because of that. Do you think... Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, text, I'll text Robin. I'll, I'll let him know <laughs> okay. about that. Back, like, Robin, your game can't handle uh, my code. Just uh, that's on your end, not mine. I yep. need you to fix that. We'll get uh, we'll get says coin here. I'm going to kill Robin Walker. The catchphrase. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. What uh, what can we expect? Do you think to see on? in this overtime period, which I'm not calling a half because I discussed the math of that already. Um, what, what do we expect to see out of these teams? Let's talk about the game again. Remember that? Uh, vaguely. It's a distant memory, but <laughs> I, I remember some <laughs> of the highlights. Uh, so yeah, uh, overtime, I don't know if you talked about the format of it already, but it is, uh, it's one round, ten minutes. Whichever team wins that round wins the match. And in the rare event that neither team wins that round within 10 minutes, we will go into another overtime period. In all my years casting Team Fortresses the second, I have only seen one game go into double OT. So it's extremely mm. rare. Although OT itself is also uh, some way. Some way? I was going to say somewhat and semi, so I said some Easy way. for you to say. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Uncommon. Um... 
Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we're not expecting it to go to double overtime. A little different from the European rules. In the Euros, they have uh, this thing called a golden cap, which is not a piece of headwear. In fact, it's a round where, uh, at, at the end of it, whoever controls middle, if no one takes a round, whoever controls mid wins, which I think is another interesting way to do it. So we do have Source TV now. Uh, I'm not sure how many slots it is. I might actually be taking up the only slot right now, but I have given the, the IP to my fellow casterman here. <laughs> it is uh, full. You're right. Okay, so I'm in the only slot, so let me <laughs> let me help these guys expand the Source TV. One uh, moment. Golly. So, you know, guys, this, this is the first night that we're doing this, and we want to thank you for your patience with us. Um... Other than this whole uh, this whole hiccup with servers, which is a little bit out of our control, um, we hope you have been enjoying the show. Shoutouts to uh, Truck Truck, who's been doing a fantastic job uh, here uh, behind the scenes, and uh, give him some love. Uh, these production guys, I mean, everyone loves Kurt, I know, but you need to take time during the cast to, to give love to the production people. So shoutouts to uh, hashtag Hot Kurt. Okay, so I have given uh, the source to be info to our caster men. They should be able to join up now. Get a whale. Let me know how that goes. Hopefully we got our cameraman in here as well. That is here young go. Curtis Russ. Now, sir, the thing you just entered, I'm getting servers full again. Can you believe it? Uh, well, that's real unfortunate. Uh, I'm going to have the teams change the map, and hopefully that fixes it. All right. You know, the good news about all of this is that once we go all through all of this one time, it, certainly we'll never have these troubles again, right? Uh, yeah, boy, that's the hope. I mean, I certainly know what I'm doing tomorrow after a full shift at work. I will come home and have another full shift uh, <laughs> working for Sivo to try to fix this. So, uh... Guys, if you want to send a Father's Day thank you gifts to Lang, his address is Alex Van Camp. Numbers. Yeah, just write guys. that on a package. Don't get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just just write TF2 player <laughs> in Wisconsin because I'm the only fucking one here. They'll know who you mean. They know yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be uh, great. So just write Lang on your package and just throw it in a mailbox. Throw it into the sky, and it'll uh, give it to leave. your local congressperson. Get there, yeah. And they will make sure it finds its way to me. That's how that works. So this hot map is reloading now. Do you want to try uh, connecting to the source TV again? Oh, I don't know if it's still thank. full. Thank gooses, I am getting in. There we go. Right. And uh, hopefully Seems our cameraman like is getting here as well. He will give us verbal or nonverbal communication. He will flap his arms twice if he is in, and he won't flap his arms at all if he isn't in. So that's a really bad communication system, but it's what we got. Okay, he has flapped his arms twice. So we are in the Source TV. I'm currently sending client info. Oh, there it's we hanging go. at sending client info, so I'm mildly yeah. worried. Okay, I just clenched so hard that I made a diamond. But we are in... We are now, ready. Now, Lang, what does that mean? Let's talk about that. Well, uh, Let's my talk. sphincter yeah, yeah, yeah. was... Okay, no, we don't have to... Okay. There's kids. Kids, remember, uh, get permission from your parents if you're watching this cast uh, tonight. It's 18 plus. Uh, cast. Just a reminder. But uh, So we're getting started again with this third period, this overtime period. And thanks for sticking with us through the hiccups. Team Fortress 2, the third. Team Fortress 2, the third, right? Yeah, um, so I'm going to tell these teams to go live ASAP Alapagus, because uh, by the time the Source TV delay catches up, we will have been in here for about two minutes. So yeah, I'm going to let Mr. Slynn know. Yeah, so guys, we are moments away. We are eyelash hairs away uh, from, from going live with this. And so again, uh, if you didn't hear the explanation from my lovely co-caster, uh, it's whoever can pull off a, a cap and... Uh, you know, there's no clear favorite here. If you've been here with us from the beginning, we saw a very strong start from Ding Dong Daddies, who were the, uh, you know, top IM team, or one of the top IM teams. But then the, the momentum certainly got back on the side of the Goldman Sachs team, and, I mean, this is anyone's game. There's no clear favorite here, given what we've seen already this evening. Uh, yeah, we do finally have the, the players suddenly appearing in the server as the Source TV is like, oh, wait a minute, clients right. are connected. Yes. And it suddenly realizes it needs to start sending us data. Um, hot data. Hot data. But yeah, yeah, we have the teams Warm. readying up. I hear the sound that signifies they're readying up with the tournament system. Uh, so yeah, this game should be going underway soon, I hope. We have yeah. uh, actually 11 players in the server, not quite the 12 that we need to play this video game. That is the requirement, yeah. 
uh, a good game if you have 11 friends. So, I mean, Lang, I was just saying that it's very difficult to pick a favorite here because what a strong start we had first right off the beginning from Ding Dong Daddies, but then... You know, Goldman Sachs definitely showed why they're here and, and how they got into this damn tournament in the first place because they, they rocked it and they tied it right back up. And so it's it's hard to pick a fave. Have you picked a fave in your head yet? Or I have been unable too to close pick a to call. Fave. I mean, it's 4-4. Four to four. It's a great game. Certainly, uh, Goldman Sachs have had a stronger showing in the second half. Uh, that's where all their momentum has been. But, you know, we've had a bit of a break, let's call it between the end of the second half and the beginning of our overtime period here. Intermission, yeah. <laughs> and you never know. Maybe someone who's hot has gotten cold. Maybe, uh, you know, this this hot uh, bank is not as hot. Hot bank, Maybe yeah. he's even hotter. Maybe he's just been there running laps. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Lang, I mean, it's it feels like to me that we've been sitting here for a fourth of an hour. Would you agree uh, a with day. that? A yeah. day, yeah. Almost a I fourth of wish an hour. I kind of wish I had some gorf with me, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, uh... If you've got raisins and you've got peanuts, I've got a surprise for you. You've got gorf. Hot gorf. Uh... You know, we're, we're going live soon, uh... And that's what's happening. Uh, we've seen the scouts going crazy all day long. I've got to think that they're going to continue that, and they're going to continue going crazy. Even though where I'm located, and it, certainly in the Eastern time zone, it's about to be Monday... But I don't want to be that guy that says, um, technically, it's tomorrow. You know those people? <laughs> uh, I do. Um, it's 12.01, it's technically Monday. So, for, for our viewers who don't know, aren't you in, like, the super eastern time zone? Yes, yeah, yeah, it's currently right now, it's 1.25 a.m. where I'm located. So, he actually lives... You're essentially on the easternmost point of inhabitable North America. North America. Yes, I literally am. In fact, I've been to that point many times. It's called Cape Spear. It's a lovely, lovely place. Yeah, 126 in here in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. So yeah, we got Get a Whale braving the harsh Arctic conditions. <laughs> right. We don't have houses here. It's very difficult. You have to sort of build makeshift shelters, put up, uh, you know, drape some uh, drape some drapes. <laughs> Some drapes. So you do to stay warm, yeah. yeah. you eat your dwarf and you, uh, you face away from the wind. <laughs> I mean, these are all real you things. You I don't can't know let if your dwarf get across. cold. I mean, how else are you going to survive? There's nothing worse, Lang, than cold raisins and peanuts. Yeah. You don't want corp. That's not... <laughs> that'd be awful. <laughs> right. Cold, so old... Of... <laughs> cold and old raisins and peanuts? That sounds fucking terrible, Mike. I don't want any of that. I want good old raisins and peanuts. I don't, I don't want any of this cold stuff. Uh, so here's the good thing about this. Here's how many people in the planet are laughing at this right now. One, and it's me. Yep. And I'm <laughs> that's, roaring that's laughing. Good. No one we else We are just is. narrowing down and alienating uh, our audience. How have we never cast before, Lang? How has this <laughs> ever happened? I think of a few reasons. Oh, uh, my goodness. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so these teams are still, you know, setting up, they're prepping the server for overtime. We gotta make sure it's, you know, 10 minutes and the wind limit's all set right and the oh, whitelists are all good and the config's all okay and, you know, we're just gonna round to the nearest acceptable bounds and get this underway as soon as possible. Of course, though, it appears that we are on, like, a full two-minute delay for Source TV, so uh, even once the teams do go live, we're gonna be sitting here talking about GORP. Or we're gonna round to the two full minutes. bounds. I'm not familiar with yeah. that saying, Lang. What's that? What, what did I say? We're I, gonna I round to the full bounds. I don't know. I'll have to watch the VOD back. We'll get did the I say that? Replay. That's not even like a Didn't human sound... sentence. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I was trying to say, but I don't think I said it right. Let's. Um. What are some things we we can talk about? I I want to go back to this defense of pyro heavy engineer. Uh, you've played the team fortresses. <laughs> have you seen that uh, in in the past? It's a bit of a unique approach, isn't it? I'm sorry. I was helping approach. someone. That's okay. <laughs> I'm talking about the Highlander defense that we've seen uh, thus far out of the uh, Goldman Sachs squadron. Playing Pyro Heavy Engineer. And, uh, you know, your first instinct, instinct, easy for me to say, might be to laugh at that, but it has it, it has worked. We've seen good defenses of last. Are we going to see it again, Blank? I mean, yeah, Highlander defense is, is strong. That's actually, I've been on one or two teams where we would call that as our play. Just, oh yeah, Highlander defense, which mm -hmm. meant do whatever random stuff you want, make sure there's no two of the same class, and 
You know, because you know, often when teams are pushing into last, they'll be prepared for, uh, you know, like a heavy or an NG mm -hmm. or some combination of those. But if you throw out like a, like a pyro heavy and NG, a lot of teams aren't really prepared to deal with all those at once. So just the simple surprise factor could often be enough. Yeah, looks um, like we're going though. All right, well, uh, maybe the players are frozen, we... but it's... Oh uh, yeah, well, And it suddenly is, we're starts. in a live mid-fight? I don't... Here we are, we're in a live <laughs> okay. mid-fight, so uh, we're started here on TeamFortress.tv. Uh, thanks for sticking with us for all this. This first mid-encounter is certainly uh, going on. Uh, we have some different aliases of some players, but so far we have only Zigster down, who is the first to die on the Goldman Sachs squadron. Uh, still fighting it out here. Uh, the cap's gonna go down, and it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, a ding dong dance. Capping a uh, little tougher because they don't have their uh, their aliases, but you know we know what we're doing. Sure, whatever you say. Uh, <laughs> uh, we actually have a whoa! You must Mike with the air shot on the bank there. I guess he's going by Ben in in this regular game. Maybe his alias is Ben K and ben not Q. Bank. And I'm just Ben Q. Sponsored <laughs> right. Ben Bank sponsored by Bank. Uh, yeah, Q. yeah. Uh, uh, Cap goes back, and you must Mike is certainly uh, a mobile gentleman. He's he's still up, I believe, on his first life. And mobile gentleman. He is. Yeah, we're I just like in that. crazy mode now. What happened to us, Lang? We used to be. I can good. think of a few. Th we. That reminds me of a time you know? when everything was simple and nothing hurt. <laughs> So, uh, the cap is back, but here comes now Red has their Uber, and they're gonna bring it in. They're taking it in right through this IT. Showstopper gets up top, promptly falls back down. But they're gonna try to cap this right back. Now, they haven't used yet. Finally, now, they pop it onto the scout. They're gonna take the scout and soldier, and now he, wow, he's going for a ride, though. Popped up in the air, luckily still Ubered. Uh, uh mid, yeah. mid got capped back, at least. Mr. Slim's just trying to build up the last bit of his Uber here. He's playing pretty safe, although now he's moving up towards that choke, being a little bit more adventurous. 85% uh, Uber, surely they're going to try to take this in pretty quickly. They're still trying to decide if they want to take this IT. It looks like Mr. Slim is going to do the old chariot strat, uh, leading one or both of his scouts from this Uber. He has the Uber up now. They're pushing in the mid, popping early, making sure there's no death from Sticky Trap. You must might getting launched into Narnia, just straight up into the skybox. d -flame, though, taking this Uber, trying to flank these players that are in that sewer area. He does some distraction, uh, good damage, almost taking down Bank, but uh, he does get killed himself. So now, uh, Goldman Sachs are going to cap mid, but Maui Wally almost has his Uber, and they have one player advantage, so they're just going to come right in. Yeah, the Chronicles of You Must Mike, and unless one of these teams can get a... These medics are in this sort of cycle where it's back and forth, and it, each of these teams, they need to pick out an important pick, or we're going to be back and forth on this mid for a long time. Maui Wowie, again going for a ride, popped up. Uh, the cap does go back to red, but how is this going to play out now? Oh, and down goes Slin, and there we go. We're going to break that cycle, and here we go. We've got the cap on second. You know, it's a lot of back and forth until you can get a med pick, and that's what just, uh, that's what did it. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, that was either a full wipe or dang near a full wipe. D oh, wow, defense actually went out, so I think this is, this is gonna be it. Uh, Ding Dong Daddy's going in there, making it happen, uh, winning in this overtime round. 5-4 in favor of Ding Dong Daddy's, uh, winning the inaugural match of the inaugural cast mm -hmm. of the Team Fortress TV Twitch Invitational. Uh, so thank you, you know, guys so much for bearing with us through all these technical difficulties. Uh, again, I take full responsibility for them. They are 100% my fault. So tomorrow, after I get off of work, I will spend... I will not leave my computer until these problems are fixed and these Until wrongs have been righted. You better so, not. Uh, we want to give an update as well. I'm getting word from chat that Classic Mixup have just won their match as well. They pull the victory out 5-1. In case you missed that one, over uh, over there, over on the other channel. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I will I will personally see to it that these issues are fixed and hopefully remedied in time for our next cast. But uh, yeah, originally we were going to do two matches on the stream tonight, but uh, that kind of took a long time and things have sort of moved along without us. And I'm in danger of having heat stroke again. So I think we're going to call it here tonight, <laughs> Mike. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for casting with me. Uh, thank yeah. you, Truck Truck, uh, for doing the, the camera work. And again, thank you for all the viewers. And thank you so much for the teams for uh, putting up with that. Uh, the teams were super friendly. Uh, they were easy to work with. You know, Mr. Slen helped me get this new server set up uh, so we could finish out that cast.
Uh, congratulations to Ding Dong Daddies, and that was still a really, really good showing from Goldman Sachs, 5-4. Yes. And uh, Goldman Sachs, of course, aren't out of the tournament. They still uh, they still are in their group. It's two losses to get eliminated from a group and two wins to be, uh, move forward into playoffs. So uh, we'll see more from Goldman Sachs, certainly see more from Ding Dong Daddies. We'll uh, see more behalf- right here on uh, Team Fortress TV, just reminding people to, to stick around. Plenty more TF2 to come over the next uh, several days, right, sir? Uh, absolutely. So yeah, once again, thank you Twitch for sponsoring this tournament. Thank you Twitch John for setting that in motion. And uh, yeah, go check out Team Fortress TV, teamfortress.tv, uh, the home of competitive Team Fortress 2. Thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Good night.